Uh, doesn't it like USB external drives? Doesn't it? Wait, wait, it does something! Oh, of course. No, you have format. You don't? Yes, I remember that DOS command correctly. What? Oof. Wow, that was an uncomfortable amount of force required. That's also why I don't really do retro computing stuff because, well, as I said before, I'm kind of a monster when it comes to hardware. Oof. Well, if it wasn't broken before, it's certainly now. <laughs> let's copy that floppy, let's copy that floppy. Put it on the side again. Yeah, that was the hard drive, perfect. It makes now very good hard drive noises. Copy.exe, I hope. Wrong DOS were. Oh, come on! <laughs> 255 megabytes of EMS. I mean, maybe it did work? That didn't work, that didn't work. So, hi and welcome. Today we do something very different and we're gonna installing MS-DOS 8.0 on this old HP um, T5720, I think, thin client I got for free from work like 10 years ago because those things are pretty shit. But they should be good enough to run DOS, but just installing DOS like 6.22 would be too boring. Also installing free DOS would also be too boring, so I installed the one DOS version Microsoft didn't want you to install. And that's, well, Windows, eh, not Windows, uh, MS-DOS 8.0 and unfortunately that means... Gotta... Yeah. Put on protective gloves here. Installing Windows ME. <laughs> so, gotta, you know, have proper workplace safety when handling toxic materials. So, let's begin in, with putting their CD in. Letting the camera focus again. And uh, let's get rid of the stupid glove. Uh, start! And hopefully it should work. I have not tested this on real hardware before, I tested it on virtual machines. I actually um, created a smaller image so we could uh, skip the Windows ME process. But it turned out my installation image didn't work, but here it actually works with the normal Windows ME uh, setup, so yeah. Uh, I don't need this yet, I will need the product key though. Would be really bad if I would leak, you know, Windows ME product keys. Would be really sad. What? That's already going into a good start. There it is! What do you mean you can't find the driver? It's literally there! What the fuck was this? <laughs> That's off to a good start. That's, you know, really good start. Could you please focus, camera? No? Hello, camera. Better. Start from CD. Oh, is it because it's a... Uh, uh, doesn't it like USB external drives? <laughs> oh no! Well, that complicates things. Actually complicates things a lot. Shit. Gonna have to make a cut here. So, 
Maybe if we are lucky, we can get a Windows NE working from USB. Like the installer. <laughs> No, it does something with the stick. Does it boot? Oh no, it didn't work. Hmm. Not good. Not good at all, actually. <laughs> So I have here boot floppy, hopefully this works. Come on. Oh, come on, please. Pretty please, hmm? do it for me. Come on. Doesn't, wait, wait, it does something. Oh. Of course. <coughs> well, so much for that. So I have rewritten the boot floppy and let's see if it makes a difference. So let's boot again. Oh, 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 it reads. I've used now a Fritos based um, boot floppy. Maybe this works. We just need to format um, the uh, uh, C drive with a FAT file system. And after that, if this works, it's actually, it could, does it work? If this works, it's, getting really easy. Can I make a slash sys? No, you have format. You don't. Shit. In any case, uh, that's easy to fix. That's really easy to fix. We literally have to copy the format command on the di floppy disk. That's it. Really easy to fix. So, good news and bad news. Bad news, um, the Windows ME plan will not work. But as I said, I have already a pre-prepared DOS 8 image on there. So, a uh, post recording slash video editing video here. I mean, need to sm make a small intermission uh, and show you actually how to make or how to get the DOS 8 uh, files on a USB stick. And well, I will show you this in the next clip. So, what you need is a piece of virtualization software that allows you to uh, read uh, raw. Uh, hard disk images, which I think only VirtualBox or QAMU allows you to do. At least I know for certain VMware doesn't. So you need either VirtualBox or QAMU. You need, of course, uh, Windows ME installation media, and you need a little utility called um, MFDDME. We need this later. Uh, I just wanted to mention it. And well, I will show you when we need it, because this is the utility that actually allows us to boot into DOS, into DOS 8. So, but first we need to create a raw hard disk image. Under Linux you do it like this. Uh, DD is disk uh, destroyer command. Um, input file, def0, just, you know, uh, to create an empty file. Uh, output file is the disk image we want. Block size is here set to 100,000 kilobytes, one megabyte. 
and 700 times, so it will write 700 megabytes to an empty disk image. So then we need a QAMU system, 32-bit, uh, HDA means the first IDE hard drive in QAMU, uh, minus CD-ROM should of course point to the installation menu and minus boot menu on means simply, well, I really want the boot menu here. So uh, let's actually do 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 few uh, zoom to fit and let's move it here and come on. Ah, oh, I hate those window controls. Uh, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom zoom zoom. Not too much zooming but enough to make, you know, Fortnite play as chili. So we need the DVD uh, the CD drive, so we can start the actual Windows ME installation, which should have worked in the first place on uh, the thin client, but didn't. What fun. Ugh. So we can wait now an eternity for everything to load and i hope i don't have audio issues again because i really don't want to re-record it <sighs> let me actually yes please yes yes Yes, uh, we want to from the CD again, from the CD, and yes. It just formatted the hard drive. You know, the hard drive image we just created. Uh, it's the usual Windows 95, 98, and ME setup. I mean, what is there to talk about? You probably saw it over a hundred times if you clicked on this video on this video so yeah i won't comment too much on it i actually think i can actually pretty much cut the whole setup out <laughs>
I don't really give a shit anymore how to do it in QEMU. I think the fastest way is here via floppy. So we make block size one kilobyte and count well 140. Now we need to mount that shit. Uh, win M win me disk A into a directory I made in the subdirectory to mount and oh yeah. We need to make a FAT12 file system first and now we can mount it. Oh yeah, I need pseudo writes. So now we have it here, that means not this but this. Uh, yep, there is our floppy. So now we need to copy over the files mfddme into that one. Sudo because I had to mount it as root, perfect, and now on you mount uh, MT. So perfect. Uh, oh yes, Windows ME is finally ready. That means uh, we need to shut it down sadly for a moment, yes, because I didn't add a floppy drive. <laughs> so. Yeah, we can go out of this terminal and we can add a floppy drive. Uh, disk A, escape and please boot from hard drive. You zoom to fit, perfect. That means we have here a floppy now. Come on. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. So we need this file somewhere on the C drive, preferably. <sighs> yes, I want to look at my own hard drive. So, um, I think this was the instruction uh, file. Release notes, capability install notes. Oh yeah, there are the instructions here. And actually I think I'm gonna get, go for a smoking break and before we do that. So, well, time to start. At first we uh, we created that and we need to copy over command.com, io.sys and uh, rec environment 32exe So we need a few more Explorer win windows right now. Uh, or at least one. We need to go to C, windows. Uh, yes, I want to view the contents of this folder and we need here command.com copy paste Perfect Then uh, from the uh, System folder rec environment 32 System Yes Oh God, da, da, da. yes, still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling. Oh man, and I ran out of drinks. Perfect. Uh. There it is, perfect, copy, paste. Uh, I'm not on the floppy, I hope. Uh, well, in any case, we need to go back because we need to go in the command folder 
and edb folder and get io.sys perfect now we need to launch a dos shell which goes oh uh, accessories dos by the way if this is not a real dos shell um this is a it's like dos box it's a virtual machine this is pure emu emulation here once Windows, as I explained in the um, how does Windows ME work section of the video, there is no DOS left. DOS is just a bootloader for ME. ME doesn't interact with DOS whatsoever. It's not based on DOS, it's pure Windows. Uh, so we need to go here, mfdme, dir and uh, win me dos so yes we did it press okay now we need to copy the files to um c windows and c and windows system okay so those two first back 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 those here yes please yes please so then only command.com to windows yes please and now to system 32 um uh, okay. Oh, no, 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 not system 32, just system. And yes, good. Um, this also recommends doing a little bit of editing in autoexcept.bat and uh, win.com, which we're gonna do now. And uh, not win.com, I mean, um, um, config.sys <laughs> sorry brain starts to melt and yeah I actually need my documentation here not this one not this one but this one yeah okay so edit auto exact so this can start Day here we need here uh, at echo of path equals c backslash uh, windows semicolon c backslash uh, windows backslash command and c backslash good those other can stay we need here a clear screen and uh well we need to launch command.com that means we can save now and quit and we also need config.sys because we are gonna need a cd driver for the next step and this not we need this one device equals c colon windows ef h EFHLP.sys. I have no idea what this file does, but it was. It's let really required to boot Windows ME into DOS. So, yeah. Uh, device hi equals C backslash Windows backslash command backslash EBD backslash. Uh, OAKCDROM.sys 
it's the CD-ROM driver we need. Well, CD-ROM support. Uh, CD-ROM. Uh, install equal C Windows command EDD KB dot com GR C. Uh, that's just for the German keyboard layout. Uh, backslash. Windows backslash command backslash keyboard dot sys and dos equals high UMB. This is for the high memory support in DOS. So we can save that and quit. Um, let me check the with the documentation again. Uh, this not this would be only required to boot Windows, so don't do that. Don't add that. That will boot you straight into Windows. And uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Durr. Oh no, it actually doesn't show here. But in any case, if we reboot now, it should reboot in DOS, I think. If we reboot now, it should reboot into DOS. If it doesn't crash during shutdown. Hmm. Come on, sh would you please shut down? Yes, yes. Would you for fuck's sake please shut down? Oh, okay. In any case, we can switch actually the CD now to... Oh, oh what was it? Uh, Q. Yeah, there it is. We are now in DOS. That's good. Um, as you probably can see here, we have here a little memory management. Oh, I should actually make it bigger, zoom to fit. And let's make it bigger again. Oh, come on. Man, really. Go away, terminal. I think you are confusing things. And uh, no, this is what I want. So, if you zoom in, if you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. As you can see, it doesn't use like upper memory or um, higher memory because the manage uh, we didn't load any memory management drivers and actually any me memory management on board is well kind of fuck what it didn't load the cd rom oh yeah haha <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm stupid. I forgot to add <laughs> a CD drive. <laughs> and why are we on US keyboard layout? Oh, don't think, don't think. Don't think, don't think, just do. <laughs> mscdx dot exe slash d uh, slash d cd rom save and quit 
And let's actually config.sys. Do I have here a typo in here? Uh, where is config.sys? There is config.sys. Uh, install C Windows command EBD keyboard. Oh! Fucking typos, man. Fucking typos. Those are the things that get me every time. No. Good. And now we should be able to. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't shut down the post machine. Yes, boot from the hard drive. No, I don't want to quit OBS. So when we go now to the Durr. Come on. Ugh. Are you high? I mean, I gave you the CD, right? Oh yeah, I just took ages um um i think it was installed dot e exit by the way yes we are now with german keyboard perfect so uh yes um this is a dos memory management tool and um test 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 and oh boy, they ask for a serial number. Would be really sad if someone would actually, uh, you know, copy this number here, because that would technically be software piracy. I mean, that would be really, really bad, wouldn't it, right? I mean, no one would do that, right? Yes, yes. Yes, express installation. You can accept the defaults. They work. I tested it. Uh, just, you don't have to mess with anything here. This actually seemed to be a really cool uh, memory management tool for DOS. Too bad we didn't have it back in the day. We used like the normal... Uh, I, I mean, it was uh, MS-DOS 6.22, so what on my first computer ever. Uh, yeah, read me the title. No need to read. Yes, let's also throw optimize, express optimize, bam. And this looks good. Config EF help. Config.sys error, really? Oh, I got a typo. Uh, it's IFS help. Data save and quit. But if we look now at memory, it still doesn't have upper memory. Why? Uh, not VI, we are under DOS, uh, output sec dot bat. What the fuck did you do? What the fuck did you do? My god, it completely ruined my auto exit. Oh, great. No, it can't. What? Opto the bad. Okay, oops. No.
Alright, we have more, right? Yeah. Opto dot opt zero dot bet. Okay. This is actually something that it didn't do the last time. It added like to file uh, opt zero dot bet. Okay. Interesting. It fucked over my. Oh! <laughs> Must have been glitched out or something. Okay, the last time it didn't fuck over my old text sector, but no problem. We can write a new one. Uh. Uh, yeah, as. First of all, let's delete that shit again. Uh, echo of uh, path equals C windows uh, U windows uh, Z backslash windows command and C C windows windows command C perfect so load high C uh, windows uh, command mscdx dot exe dot exe uh, D C D ROM. Oh God, I ha hate it already. Winder. We actually don't need those two lines because those are only relevant for Windows. Set comes back. Uh, C Windows. Command com uh, I already set the path set prompt equals dollar p dollar g whatever that does I actually don't know set temp equals c windows Temp and set TMP equals C Windows Temp and clear screen C Windows uh, com, man, com. So yeah, it's restored, save and end. Uh, wait, I forgot one thing. Edit auto accepted. No, 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 no. It was in edit config docs, right? Oh, don't tell me the. Hi, UMB. Hi, UMB DOS. Perfect. Keyboard. Perfect. Device. Hi. Perfect. Device C, E, F, S. So. Perfect. 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 This looks right. So. We need to reboot probably. So memory. This looks better. We have no upper memory. Yep. This is how proper DOS memory looks like. So, but we have one problem. We still have Windows on here and we don't want to have Windows on here, only DOS. So, that means we need to get into a terminal again. 
Uh, let's actually clear this one. You don't need to see what I have mounted here. So, uh, CD, uh, wait, um, ah, whatever. Data to, uh, Jesus Christ, QMU, WinME, uh, so, we need now the, uh, wait, RM, R plus 8, here plus 8. So, we need now to uh, mount this thing here. LO setup minus PF. This will actually make your drive detectable as a loop device under Linux and uh, should be this one because uh, times match up. So, we use this one. And let's actually check MT. Uh, it's not mounted. Perfect. That means we can now mount this one to MT here. And here we have our Windows files. So let's actually just make a sudo cp r MT into the uh, DOS 8 folder we just created. So, CD DOS 8. What do, don't we need? So, we actually... Uh, here we can remove... This file... This file... This file, this file, this file, uh, this file, uh, this file, this file, and I think this file, if I remember correctly, and I actually should specify rm. So rm minus r, uh, we don't need this one, and we certainly don't need this one. And we also don't need this one. And we should actually do a sudo again. So, uh, we can actually also remove uh, this one. Uh, QMM perfect CD Windows actually Windows to Ah, uh, what the fuck am I actually doing? Cursive, so I don't have to fucking type in sudo all the fucking time. Backup when this is just you know because uh, Windows for copying exactly two things over. Uh, mm. oh. So RM everything here. Really, do I? So good, we have now a clean Windows folder. Now we can copy from R. We need the entire. Uh, Command folder here. Command folder here. And we need um, the temp folder. And we need, uh, what was it? IFS help.sys.
I think this is all we need here. So we can actually remove the backup. And let's make sudo again. Perfect. We should be around 6 megabytes here. 11 megabytes. I have. Oh, yeah, because I have QEMM. QEMM installed. Okay, good. This is now roughly how the um, MS DOS files should look like. And you know, you just need to make a bootable device, copy those files over, and you have MS DOS 8 installed. That's it. That's all you have to do. This has now no trace of Windows left. It's, you know, with the memory management, management 11 megabytes big. Perfect. This is pure MS DOS 8. Oh, by the way, um, one little change you, you could make is here. It's not really relevant, but uh, you can also set this to zero, but not really relevant. Uh, DOS doesn't use it. And yeah, this is how to get a uh, Windows, uh, not Windows, uh, with MS DOS 8 files for installation on things like hardware, which, well, we will go back to now. So, good news and bad news. The good news is my new plan should work. Like, here is the boot floppy, and there is the files I need. And yes, it can read here USB drives under DOS, no problem. It just has issues with USB drives under DOS. Um, there is a driver for USB drives under DOS, but sadly um, I can't easily implement it in the Windows ME image, so I have to use my pre-prepared uh, Windows 8 image. How to do that I will show in a virtual machine, but right now on hardware I can do that. I will record that later in like a virtual machine. But right now let's Put that floppy in there uh, and don't forget to stick plug in the USB stick and reboot. Hopefully it tries to boot from the floppy and that not the USB stick. Na 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 na, please boot. Na 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 na, please boot. <laughs> no idea why I'm fucking singing, but you know, that's floppy drive speeds. They aren't exactly fast. So, now we have fdisk format and xcopy. So let's do fdisk first because I want to check if actually the USB drive is detected. This looks good. And it's detected F drive uh, D. Perfect. So all that's left to do is, you know, format this. It's now English again. Good. Yes, I want that. It will be DOS. Uh, let's make MS DOS 8. files what really interesting in any case we gonna uh, go back to a uh, x copy um, it was d dos 8 into C 
and flex we need our H I C E R and Y I think. Yes, I remember that DOS command correctly. What? Oof. What? Oh my. Is the onboard storage broken? Is this why it never worked? Oh, come on. Please don't have a hardware failure, please. Uh. Oof. Oof. Yeah, looks like the storage is broken. <laughs> Luckily, I am prepared for that. Um, well. At least I thought I was. I have ordered uh, a replacement uh, storage for this, but I can't find it right now, so I'm gonna make a cut. I found it! I found it! So, well, time to shut that ship box off again. Remove power and at least it's relatively easy to get into, I think. I just need to... Yeah, let's remove the USB stick and also the floppy drive because I really don't want to destroy the floppy drive in case something gets wrong and let's actually remove all the fucking cables for now let's move the keyboard on the side and so there was some way to open this thing i completely forgot how uh, no this wasn't it it has something to do with pushing something into somewhere and something across the room just fell down and I have no clue what it was. Oh, oh. yes, Jesus. Oh my God, what was this? Where does this belong? Yeah, I'm an absolute monster when it comes to hardware maintenance. <laughs> Fuck, uh, there is a two pin header. Maybe this was the right one, I hope. I mean, I have not, no idea what this even is. Is this the speaker? Do we need this shit actually? Is this the PC speaker? I mean, how many two pin headers are there? I only see those two. That means, yeah, it can only get in there. So, yeah, let's put it back in there. I hope PC speakers are bidirectional. I actually don't know from the top of my head. Where was the flash storage? There is the flash storage module. Wait, it has jumpers? This one doesn't have jumpers. Mm. Should work, hopefully. If I can get this shit out somehow. There is one of those really annoying plastic things. Let's actually unplug the PC speaker again. I actually gonna turn it off because I don't think we actually need them. So uh, how high is the likelihood that we're gonna destroy something? Pretty high to be honest. This plastic thing won't survive. Pretty sure about that. Come on. Uh, I mean, it's like a 15 year old plastic thing at this point. Is 15 even enough? No. <laughs> I think this was made in 2006 or so. Come on. Ah. Yeah, this is... I need different tools.
something a little bit more and of now this metal thing is in the way of this braid. Maybe all we need is a little bit more precision. And come on, get the fuck out of here. Oh man. Why doesn't it move? Wow, that was an uncomfortable amount of force required. Plastic shit thing can suck my fucking dick. Come on, plastic thing. Don't be that way. Please, 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 please. Wait a second. Is this even compatible? Maybe. Come on, get the fuck out of here there. Dear plastic thing, stop this. <sighs> yeah, this plastic thing can. Don't want it, don't need it. Oof. Well, if it wasn't broken before, it's certainly now. <laughs> Wait, can you see it? Uh, a few bent pins. Uh, any case, we have now a storage upgrade. Uh, should simply go in there, right? I hope. I mean, what else could I do besides I simply breaking it? Uh. Ah, I didn't like this noise at all. But it looks like it might still work. Yes, I am an absolute monster when it comes to hardware. In my job, I actually handle like AMD 64 core CPUs, you know, which are worth five grand. And I have no idea why they let me handle it, but I handle it and so far I haven't fucked up. But like at home, yeah, in special with like an old thin client, don't really get too much of a shit for preservating such a piece of garbage. That's also why I don't really do retro computing stuff because, well, as I said before, I'm kind of a monster when it comes to hardware. Oh, come on. Would you please fit? What's wrong now? Uh, now I can unplug the cables fucking again. Please, just fit. Please. I wanna get this done. Come on. Maybe we should actually use those screw holes to hold it together. Yeah, good enough. Uh, where was I here? Why I don't really do retro computing? As you can see, I'm not actually that much interested into hardware preservation and I, you know, don't want to destroy <coughs> collectible items like I have a computer that would well work wor would work well better with DOS like it's a Pentium 2 which was like 
perfect, would be really perfect for this kind of video because it's pretty much the exactly made for uh, Windows ME, well more Windows 98, but you get the gist, would be well better suited. But I don't really want to touch it because, again, I'm a fucking monster who can only destroy and not create. <laughs> so, if this also doesn't work, I will just plug in a different USB stick and install it on there. The principle is the same. <laughs> Because if we use the onboard IDE flash, wait a second, if the onboard IDE flash is not working also, I could actually use a normal IDE drive and then install, ah, well, I need a Molex adapter, but well, let's see if, nah. Typo. Put things a little bit closer again, not that close. So better. Yes, uh, change the disk. There is a disk. And it's detected perfect. Data primary, yes. We need to reboot, right? Yeah. So, reboot. Perfect, looks like this IDE flash is working after all. That means this one was probably bad. I mean, it's fucking old flash from like 16 plus years ago. So yeah, of course it wouldn't work that well anymore because I know this souls were actually used those uh, film clients here and I could actually make the camera a little bit more uh, uh. Can you actually read anything here? It's the bit better question. Oh, come on camera, please would you get a little bit more? Hey, stop that. Please focus. Can you actually read anything here? Uh, why don't you just get... No. No. Oh, come on, please. Is this better? I think it's better. Yeah, it should be better. So again, we have F disk here. Oh, we have already status active. Fine. It's detected as drive C. Perfect. That means we can do a format C dash S. Yes, I mean, there is no MS DOS 8. Uh, let's go to C. Sure. No files found. Don't like that. It should copy kernel dot. Uh, you should. Don't like that at all. Did. Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot the sys command, but I think it should be fine. We only wanted to mark the drive as bootable 
and I think format does that anyway without copying the files. Okay, that means we can go into the D drive. I have here three directories prepared. This is the USB CD driver. This is for the DOS memory management. More about DOS memory management later. Believe me, I will talk a lot about it. As I promised, I would explain the relationship between DOS and Windows. Um, in special, like uh, in memory, because you will often hear that Windows, uh, Windows 95 by 98 and Windows ME is based on DOS. Not true. They are not a graphical shell for DOS. That's not how they work. Windows before that, different story, like 3, 2 and 1. But 95, 98 and ME were pure Windows. And I try to explain it here. You know, this. imagine this being simply your system memory here, those uh, boxes. And you know, a DOS memory management would look like this. So this is when DOS is loaded. You know, very basic DOS kernel files here. Then here you have your drivers in higher memory in DOS. This is, you know, the rest of the conventional memory for applications. So applications, application. So th this is here the expanded memory and the XMS memory. What was it? What was the term for XMS again? I forgot it. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Also XMS is extended memory and EMS. Oh, was X memory. Does. Okay. EMS is X. Banded memory and XMS is extended memory. Okay, good. Just to get my terms correct, so you know, DOS memory management would look something like this. It's vastly oversimplified, but you know, you would have your basic kernel, a few applications, your drivers in upper memory, a few more DOS things in upper memory, then you have here your expanded memory and here your extended memory. So once you load Windows, it will look like this. We in the case of Windows 95, 98, this is all managed by Windows. Windows, oops, sorry, what the fuck? Thanks, Excel, very cool. Windows, window, what the fuck? Uh, here, it claims to still be a DOS kernel running. I could actually not prove that. That uh, once you launch Windows 95, that a DOS kernel is still running. I was unable to verify this, but every piece of document documentation I have read so far regarding how Windows 95 works under the hood says a DOS kernel is running. I cannot prove that. So I think this part of the memory would be managed by Windows then. This is also Windows. Then Windows is able to inherit DOS drivers. So you would have here your DOS drivers. And this is all Windows again. So DOS is practically non-existent. I think this would be the Windows kernel in this area. Was unable to prove that either. but. This is how I understood how 95 and 98 worked. So MS-DOS 8 would work like this again, actually without this, because this is straight up broken. <laughs> this is straight up broken. This is just doesn't exist. We had to install, you know, QEMM to get this running because the uh, onboard uh, <coughs> Microsoft tools for managing for managing expanded and extended memory is like broken under MS. It's straight up broken under MS DOS 8. So this straight up doesn't exist. <laughs> so you can only use conventional memory and upper memory. And actually, in the default configuration, you have this either. You have just the conventional memory, you know, the 640K. <laughs> we had to actually enable upper memory. <coughs> So this is how MS-DOS uh, 
defaults in default configuration. This is how it looks. Hmm. How does it look once you load Windows ME? And yes, I am 100% sure this is how it works. I, there is no DOS running. It's all just Windows ME. Windows ME is certainly not based on DOS whatsoever. Like it doesn't use DOS, it doesn't interact with DOS, it can't inherit drivers from DOS. It straight up wipes everything from DOS out of memory. That means Windows ME is not based on DOS. This is something I wanted to make very clear. Because you will hear, oh, it's the last Windows based. No, it just uses DOS as a bootloader. That's it. It doesn't interact with it. It doesn't use it. Once you load Windows ME, it's only Windows in memory. So yeah, this is, you know, what I wanted to explain here, the relationship between MS-DOS 8 and Windows ME. And I hope, you know, my little uh, showcase here could uh, explain how it works and in a way you understand it. And well, those are the actual DOS 8 files, which are straight up our Win... What the fuck? Interesting. Hmm. Looks like I'm gonna have to touch the USB stick again. So let's just let him wait into the BIOS a little bit and see what went wrong here. Man, I wish things would just work. Well, if computer just worked, I would have no job, but, uh, yeah, cut. So, let's use a different USB stick again. And... Yes. Reboot. So because on this USB stick I have from my try tests of yesterday also the DOS 8 files and I knew those read correctly under DOS yesterday. Oh man, don't you like floppy boots? <laughs> Ah, so, and looking good so far. By the way, where is my drink? There is my drink. Ah, uh, no, this is not what I wanted. I wanted F this for a moment again. Yeah, the stick is D. Perfect. So let's go into D. Grr. CD DOS 8. Uh, DOS 8. Why does it now? Ah, yeah, because we are under free DOS. This is why. So, X copy. Fuck, I forgot something. No, I did not, right? No, there is everything we need perfect. So those are the those eight files. I completely forgot to copy the USB CD driver over, but well. Anyway, this is DOS 8. So we are gonna copy that over to the C drive. So X copy uh, the back, backslash DOS 8. Back Okay, into C, please, and A, no, now it's an English layout, H, I, C, E, R, and Y, and go. 
Oh. Yeah. Mm, no path, so dot x uh, exe. If everything works fine, we should just, you know, remove the floppy, remove the USB stick, and we should be able to boot into a uh, um, um, DOS 8 installation. If everything works. Of course, that's, you know, uh, not sure, but well, let's reboot, remove the floppy, remove the USB stick and actually go into the BIOS again, because we need to set, change the boot device. Uh, no, advanced BIOS features speed from Ada Flash. yes, thank you, save and exit. And if everything worked, we should be able to boot that shit up. Come on, please boot. Do me that. Please insert the bootable floppy. What? This is. Oh, so that make it bootable after all. That means I need to copy this to the floppy also. Also SYS dot uh, exe or what it's called. That's annoying and I also have to... <laughs> well, that's annoying. But, well, we're gonna do that. So I copied uh, sys on those floppy save and exit setup, yes. So now we need to boot from the floppy again, uh, execute the command slash sys c. Um, to be sure we sh also should probably uh, replace the command.com again. Because I think sys copies over command.com com and under free dos i think it's kernel.sys in the worst case i we gonna have to simply remove all files again to make sure that there is no trace of free dos left we just want um well uh ms dos 8 on here so is everything detected properly? Perfect, yes, good. That means sus C. Okay, dir C dash W and without white. And yeah, it added here kernel.sys. This is okay because I added this. Although we, we need to remove kernel.sys and not rm del because we are on the DOS kernel.sys. And we need to copy um, the into c command.com could why oh yeah mm. Good. Let me think for a moment. We did format slash s, okay. 
That means now everything should be bootable. Right? Right? <laughs> well, we gonna see. I actually can leave both the floppy and fair plugged in there. No, we don't want to save to CMOS because we want advanced bias features boot or flash. Thank you very much. Save and exit setup. I could have multiple devices in the boot order. The bias supports that, but I, you know, here for testing purposes, just one device only. So I can be sure it only boots from the right device every time. What are you doing? Oh no, do I? Oh yeah, doesn't it work with free dos? Oh. I'm stupid, I am so stupid. It probably also changed the auto exec. Uh. Uh, F10. I'm so stupid. That means we have to boot from the floppy again. Uh, USB, thank you very much. Save and exit setup. Yes, okay. Man, and all because of that, because fucking Windows ME can't read USB CDs. Oh, not that. That's actually useful, but fucking ME trash. I wanted to do a simple chill video today and it escalates to this. Ah, well, technically it's not only ME's fault, but I think in the year 2000, I mean ME 99, yeah, in 99 you should have USB CD support built in. Hmm? I know they weren't exactly the most common things in the world, but still. Uh, let's go see, Durr. Didn't? What? Uh, we probably don't have edit here. Shit, I have, I have to type in the, all right, yeah. I have to type in the entire path, which is Windows command edit.exe, and we want to have a look at auto sync.mat. Right. And we should, of course, type edit correctly. Are you fucking kidding me? There is command. E star. Oh. EBD. Is it in here? E star. Slash W EGA command. Ah, wait. EDB keyboard that says no, 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 no. Where is edit? Slash right. Edit. Ah, edit.com, not edit.exe. Yeah. Ah, MS DOS is fun. Fun, 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 fun. This looks like it should be. Hmm. Click.sys. 
this looks like it should be. This is like it should be. I have, do we really need a Windows 98 floppy, boot floppy for this, really? Oh, that means I have to install Windows 98 on a VM, make a fl floppy image. Oh no. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Seems Fritos won't do the job here, sadly. Yep, we need a Windows 98 run floppy. A Windows ME rescue floppy won't help here, I can explain later. So again, post recording intermission, I completely forgot to explain later why a Windows ME boot floppy won't work. Uh, simply put, they disable the sys command. You can't copy, uh, yeah, they disable the sys command, which would make the uh, hard drive bootable. So we need to use Windows 98 slash 95. So, yeah. We need a Windows 98 floppy. Back in like a fucking hour or how long it fucking takes to install Windows 98. So this should be now a Windows 95 DOS boot floppy. And hopefully it works. We probably have to format the onboard flash again. Why does it say free DOS? It shouldn't say free DOS. What is it doing? Okay, I know what the issue was. The issue was... Uh, Linux doesn't do a good job at making DOS boot disks, so we need the Windows XP uh, machine right now. Uh, at least not via USB floppy drive and I don't have an IDE connection on my computer. So we have to pull up the Windows XP machine. So, we can boot this one already and meanwhile I get uh, the floppy image on there. Please don't, just don't. We need Let's copy that floppy. Uh, give me this. Uh, we don't need the XPS firmware. We need this image on 
we don't know we need turbo C we need this and please write Let's copy that floppy, let's copy that floppy. <laughs> well, I shouldn't sing, that's probably cringe. And that's all because Windows ME has no USB support. Ugh. Oh man. Good, perfect. Let's turn it off again. Yes, please. And give me the floppy. So let's disconnect it again. Put it on the side again. And that was the hard drive, perfect. Oh crap. Mm. It makes now very good hard drive noises. Oh man. Probably have to format the C drive again. <coughs> yes, at least we're getting somewhere. No CD ROM support, please. I just want the shell. Perfect. Durr. We have everything we need, right? Sus. Yes, perfect. F this, please. Large disk support? Did Windows 95 support FAT32 already? Uh, apparently it did. I didn't, legit didn't know that. Uh, we probably need to do it anyway. Format C slash S. Then after this, hopefully, uh, after we move the DOS 8 files over, it should boot usually. Yes, please. Verifying? What? Oh, it doesn't do quick format. It does the boring kind of format. Thank you. By the way, on the Windows XP machine, I think I'm gonna use a SSD. So, in just in case this shit happens again with like falling hard drives. I mean, there's a realistic chance it didn't get killed on the. Uh, this is some plastic stuff for a capacitor. It was just l uh, laying on the workbench here. Hopefully I didn't kill also a cap capacitor anywhere. MS DOS 8. Good. Now there's these 
backslash command dot com. Perfect. Remove it. Uh, Z, uh, uh, door C. No file found. Perfect. Now we can. Oh God! Do we? Oh no! We have no X copy, right? We have X copy. Perfect. 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 Oh, that makes life easier. Um, v slash. Jesus fucking Christ! X copy. I really need a new PS2 keyboard. Like I should really restore my IBM Model M keyboard. Was eight? Was it right? And see, huh? and it was H I C E R and Y. Bad command. Wait, we don't have X copy. No, of course we don't, uh, but in any case, we have X copy on the D drive. In Windows, command X copy dot exe, I hope. Wrong DOS were. Oh, come on! Well, in any case, now that they got the floppy ready, we gonna transfer X copy to it because I'm not gonna copy the files per hand. Gonna make a cut again. So now we have a boot floppy with X copy. I mean, they have so much fucking space on the boot floppies, they are like 200 kilobytes. <coughs> By the time Windows 95 was very relevant, everyone had at least a 720k floppy lying around. I could understand why not everything would be uh, 1.4 megabyte floppies, but they could at least, at least populate it uh, 500 kilobytes and with stuff like XCopy you actually need. But well, no. They didn't. So, durr. X copy. X copy. Just checking that it works. That looks good. Okay. X copy. It's the Fritos version again. By the way, you really should have checked out Fritos. Really awesome uh, project. Into C slash uh, minus H I H I C E R and Y and go. <laughs> if this also doesn't get the uh, flash bootable, I'm honestly not sure what else to do. We can't install ME. Well, we technically can install ME from CD because I found the DOS driver for USB CDs. But that would require me, you know, unpacking the image, then repacking the image, and ugh. Also, editing the files to actually load the driver and then hope that Windows works with it. On, which is on ME very questionable because ME doesn't actually use DOS drivers. So yeah, of course ME doesn't use DOS drivers Well in any case Floppy out this can stay in because the USB stick isn't bootable in any case <laughs> And let's go into BIOS again and do the flash thing uh, no, advanced bias features, ADA flash, okay, and save and exit setup. Oh, yeah, 
shouldn't actually hit the camera. The one good thing about this little thing, uh, well, little is relative, it's actually pretty thick for a thin client, is... Oh, oh, oh! <gasps> we are here, we are here! It worked! It worked! We are in DOS 8. Did memory work. <laughs> 255 megabytes of EMS. Wait, this thing has... We don't even have that much RAM in the system, right? I'm pretty sure we only have 512 megabytes in any case. In any case, it worked, it worked. We are in MS-DOS 8. Um, one more thing, we have a... Uh, On the other USB stick, that means I have to reboot again. Oh, perfect. Oh, and I shouldn't fucking hurt my knee. So we have. Where's the other USB stick? No. Uh, there it is. Unmount this. Little thing, please. Thank you very much, sir. I mean, wait. We can use a floppy. So we don't have to... Ah, whatever. Ah, let's reboot. I mean, maybe it didn't work? That didn't work, that didn't work. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. This looks better, and there is the USB driver. Durr. Okay, I actually need to read my files. My nice files I printed out to actually look how it installs, and after that, we should be able to load CDs. So, okay, let's actually first of all copy, yeah, German layout better, USB ASPI.sys to C, um, yeah, we are in German again, Windows. Um, command ESB. Perfect. One file copied. Nah. What the fuck am I doing? I want it. Ah, oh, now my brain is on the US layout again. Good. Um, we need to edit the config dot search. So, what was the driver's name? Uh, device high equals C backslash windows backslash uh, where did I put it EBD right yeah I hope I put it into EBD and then USB ASPI ASPI yeah dot sys and we need for some reason free flags i have no idea what they do but the documentation says we should use them so uh, 
good and we need also device high equals c backslash please um usb cd dot sys slash e usb cd zero zero one okay we are in config.sys, perfect. That means we can save and close. And then edit auto exit. And we need here probably load high. Again, I hope I have uh, explained what load high means by that time. Uh, Windows command and uh, da, 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 da. mscdx dot exe slash e uh, u usb cd zero zero one okay save and file close that means if we connect the usb cd drive again ah. Uh, come on, connect. Oops. But stop making noises. You're making me nervous. That means after our reboot, and probably without this, we should be able to have USB support. <laughs> so if I put in now a disk like this one, Probably should work. No, it did not. Because it's a CD, right? And not just a DVD. Oh, it's a DVD drive. Oh. Oh. That explains a lot. Oh. Crap. Hmm. Hmm, shit. Well, <laughs> uh, oh shit. This is actually not what I wanted. Well, I think that's it for part one. We got MS DOS 8 working because, well, it reports as uh, Windows Millennium because it's not. We don't have actually any Windows here. You know, the Windows folder is fucking empty, C is empty outside of the DOS memory management software and the Windows directory. Um, I hope I have showed you how to get, you know, those DOS files as clean as I did. And well, and yeah, I have shown you Use a fucking Windows 95 boot floppy and not a FreeDOS one. For some reason, FreeDOS really, really doesn't work here. Sadly. Usually a good project. Well, it's not really intended to do the stuff that I did today, but still. Maybe I can find a DVD driver for this thing, but well, we'll see. So, for now, I call it quits until I maybe get an external CD drive that works and yeah. <laughs>